Okay, welcome to the podcast. My name is Jamie Matchett, and this is The Best Magicians You Have Never Heard Of. Today's guest has performed and taught at the Magic Castle in California. Uh, he has a lecture that's been well-received on Penguin Magic, and he's been published multiple times in Genie, Magic, and the Linking Ring. Uh, his trick, Elmer, is in the new book, Tesseract, by Mike Powers. I'd like everybody to welcome Ed Oshman. Queen of Diamonds. I will look. Got it? Ace of Hearts? Eight of Spades. Get rid of the Three of Diamonds and show everybody your Seven of Hearts. <laughs> Guys, that's it. They're... Guys, thank you all very much. I'm Edward Francis Oshman. Thank you very much. So tell us a little bit about okay. yourself real quick and your specific passion in magic. So, I hear you. Um, well, okay, I'll, I'll try to be the briefest history possible. Uh, so I've been interested in magic from a very young age. One of those typical story. I'm not the big sports guy. Not that because I'm against sports. I just don't care whether you win or lose. So it doesn't make me a good sports guy. But magic was something I obviously got turned on to at a very young age. Did birthday parties for a big whopping $10. Uh, Joined the Magic Club, hang out at the Magic Shop all day, and um, went out of Magic for a little while and until I got to college, and a local coffee house was hiring magicians and balloon artists, and my girlfriend at the time said, you know, didn't you used to do that? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, it's been a while. And they said, she said, well, you need the money. I'm like, so I uh, went to the Magic Shop, picked up a couple tricks. I still could do Matrix from, way, you know, from when I was younger, and uh, managed to get the job. So all through college, I did, you know, every weekend, you know, um, Saturday and Sunday at the coffee house doing like three hours. And then at night I got hired to do work, work at a pizza joint. And uh, I wouldn't say I was terribly good, but I wasn't bad. And, uh, and that led, um, after I graduated uh, from college, I, um, uh, Bill Malone came knocking. Uh, well, actually, I, I read uh, an article about him in Magic Magazine and the Magic Bar he had in Boca Raton. I auditioned for that, and I got that. And wow, that was one heck of an experience. You learn a lot working for Bill Malone. And since then, um, I'm a full-time magician now. Uh, up until March 15th, the COVID-19 is kind of right. the, same, as a, same as everybody. Uh, yeah, so it's nice <clears throat> to get in the suit again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, but yeah, I've just been but specifically close up. And I do a lot of corporate work, so there's you know mentalism and um, you know at, since this is my living and I have kids, um, I don't turn too many shows down. So I still do a children's act. I do a lot of school shows and uh, lots of weddings and bar mitzvahs and corporate events and you know. But close up magic to answer your question, and the close up magic is the one that's always been my passion. Anything with any small objects, cards, coins, you know, dice. You know, I I love it. So you like the the close up sleight of hand that really drives you, eh? That's yeah. Now you know, it, it's a certain degree like mentalism. That's fun to study because I've been studying stuff for so long. After a while, it's like okay, one more move. You know, <laughs> and mentalism is something different. So you know, intellectually, that makes me happy. You know, but when it comes down to it, you know, I'm I'm I still like learning the moves. I still like you know, you know, even even if I don't use them in my act, it's just it's just fun. To they're fun. To, they're fun to do. Always love working on a sleight of hand. Uh, do you have yeah. something you can uh, you can demonstrate? Some uh, sleight of hand, something cool for us? Yeah, I'll tell you. What, I'll show you. A, I'll show you uh, two tricks of my own. Uh, the first one was um, well. Um, actually, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna start with the second first. <laughs> okay, because it wasn't quite ready. So this would be something I would do in a strolling act. I, actually, I do this for not just strolling, but this works particularly well in strolling. Um, so I might have somebody standing here and standing. This is a wonderful effect. Uh, I would have two people select a card. One person would say stop, and it doesn't matter where they say stop. And the second spectator would pick a card, and I'm going to show those to the camera. So I think we have the, uh, that's the four, four diamonds. Seven of clubs. Seven of clubs. Okay. Okay, now, okay. And I stress, I go, now those are your cards, okay? However, in my pocket, I can find them. There we go. These are mine. You you can tell that they're mine because it says that they're mine. They're not yours. Uh, but I but I will show you. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. 
Anyway, but these are the red jacks. I don't know if you can see those. The jack of diamonds and the jack of hearts. Okay. okay. So we have uh, that one is mine and that is mine. So I would say you, sir, um, card back, and they can put their bat card literally back in the deck wherever they want. I would dribble, and they could toss it into the pack as well. And I'm going to show you what mine can do. Okay. So with a little snap like this, look at that. It went into the deck. But first of all, I'm going to find a card. Uh, give me a moment here. When, uh, that one could be yours. Could be. Could be. Oh, look at that. I found mine. <laughs> Am I good? <laughs> um, and let me see. Oh, wait. <laughs> I found the other one. I found mine as well. But take a look. There, se <laughs> there seems to be two cards right between the those. Now, you know whose they are, don't you? Mine? No, 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 no. These are mine. Those are <laughs> yours. Okay. <laughs> okay. But when they, I give these to each one of them, and when they look, they will be surprised to see that these are the red jacks. And I go, oh, well, I thought those were mine. Well, you know what they say what's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours. Yep. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Thank you. So. If you'd like, I don't mind teaching that to everybody if you want me to teach that to everybody. I'm sure everybody is excited and uh, it has the anticipation, waiting in anticipation. Okay. Well, if you have, you know, a rudimentary, a rud <laughs> let's just say basic, I can't say that. <laughs> a rudimentary, <laughs> um, you know, vocabulary and sleight of hand, this shouldn't be terribly difficult, okay? As a matter of fact, there's ways of making it a little bit easier as well. Okay, okay so what I do is I have... Let me get the setup. Okay, I gotta get. And, and then actually, this is a setup that can pretty much be done on the fly. Uh, if I can find it. Okay, oh, there's the other one. So I have uh, my force cards are gonna be the seven of clubs and the four of diamonds. And mm -hmm. they usually always the seven of clubs and the four of diamonds. And the two red jacks, those are all blue. I'm gonna put the red jacks on top of the deck. And then I'm going to put the force cards on top as well. Now the other two, the mine cards are going to be in my pocket here. I always keep them right there so I can get to them. All right. So th what I'll do first is I will force the cards. And what I do is I just kind of, you know, you can just kind of do like a kick cut and hold a break. Uh, I've always liked the more casual approach of, you know, cutting off half, in jogging, and shuffling all the cards on top, lifting up on the break. Okay. And what I would do, now we're doing a dribble force, but you could also do a, you know, a riffle force. Um, but, this is what, but I like the dribble force, because I think it's, it's one of the best. So I, someone would say stop, and whenever they would say stop, I would just drop all the cards below the break. And I'm going to put the four diamonds on here, and I, I'll put these back on and hold the break. And I'll go to the next person, same thing. Say stop whenever you want, and... It's just a timing thing. You know, whenever you see their lips move, you just drop all the cards below the break, and they get the seven of clubs. These cards in the hand, which have the red jacks, will get cut back up to the top. So the, the, each spectator has their own card, the seven of clubs and the four diamonds. So I make it say, those are your cards. Let's not confuse them with my cards. Now, as I'm doing that, I can pinky count two cards, or I can just push over two cards. That's probably the easiest way. You get a break under those two. And I'm going to go inside, and I'm going to reach out and show the mine card. Okay, I say these are mine. You can tell. Okay, and we're gonna do a really neat move by Herb Zero. It's called the Zero Block Edition. Now that sounds very complicated, but it's not. Uh, if I was to show this in the most basic way, okay, but I'll show I'll show you the more finessed way. Okay, the basic way is if I take these two cards, don't show the faces, you just show the backs. I place them on top so I have a break below four cards, and if I was to turn them all over, you know, and then and push off the top card, I would be showing the faces, and then if I turned everything back over, I'd be showing the backs. That's not the best way to do it, but that's basically what it is. It's kind of like a double-double lift. Okay. Uh, so I got a break under two, and I'll just peel one off, okay? And then as these hands come together, I'll push everything above the break, and it gets turned over, and I kind of catch it on the heel of my thumb. Okay. And then transfer it to a pinky, and I go, and there's the jack of diamonds and the jack of hearts, and you can push the side and now turn them over again. So, and I catch another heel break. 
So I, I transferred to a pinky. So I just showed the, uh, the, apparently the backs and the faces of the cards. Now what we'll do is the um, frustration count. And what right. I'll do is I'll be showing the same card twice, but it goes by so fast I never see it. I pick up all the cards, the four cards, and I show the jack of diamonds, peel it off, and I show it again. Now, if you're conversant with the uh, Stuart Gordon uh, double lift, which just takes too long to explain, that's the way I prefer to do it. I'll do this. I'll say uh, we'll take this one here and that one there. But nice basic, touch. Yeah, um, it's in the uh, what I think the last Larry Jennings book that came out. The um, I'll think of it, it but it's called the Stuart Gordon. Uh, that's worth learning. All right, so okay. then at this point, they're on top. They've seen my cards, the jacks. I dribble them in, and they can literally toss them in wherever they want. And I like to do the jokes. I'll say, put the card back in, toss it anywhere you want, and they do. And I go, oh, okay, let's go. is that fair? I'm like, that was too fair. <laughs> can't find it. <laughs> All right, now at this point, if you don't do any kind of a pass, you can just cut the cards, and it's fine. Great trick. Um, I do basically the Steve Drawn um, Midnight Shift, I think it's called. And it's basically the Herman Pass, where you take half, you know, like half the cards below. Yes. But you do it this way, so it's it's kind of covered, and then the fingers, so it looks like this. So I was lifted up, and if I was to close the fingers, as I twist the hand, it vanishes. So it's basically you know? a turnover pass. In a way, it's not exactly a turnover pass, but a uh, turnover pass, you're like turning the cards. Um, right. But in a way, so it's this. You know, it's here. I close the fingers. I even snap. So you have a nice little visual. It looked very nice when you did the trick, too. Yeah, thank you. So at this point, it's all build up. You know, you're pretty much, for all practical purposes, you're done. Um, I'll spread through the cards. I go uh, here. Uh, that could be your card. Uh, that could be yours. I go, oh, look. I found mine. <laughs> um... And then I'll, I'll keep going and I'll find the other one. And um, so then I'll just take those out. Now, anybody watching, they're going to expect that these two blue cards to be theirs. And by the way, I don't design a lot of my magic for magicians, but this is a trick that does fool magicians because their expectation is like, oh, I found the cards. Well, it's quite the opposite because now these are the red jacks. This is the seven of clubs and the four of diamonds. So... I say, you take yours out, you take yours out. I go, take a look, thank you very much. And I turn them over and I see that they're the red cards. And I go, oh, those are mine. <laughs> I thought these were mine. Yours is mine and what's mine is yours. You know, And it's a very strong effect. That's a nice kicker at the end there, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. I, so I, I thought also, I thought also when you were doing the trick, when I saw the two cards, I didn't think about them switching places. That was very nice. No, oh, you know, that was, you know, well, when I originally came up with the trick, that was the trick. It's like, well, the red cards are going to, it's just a regular sandwich effect. I'm like, well, that's done, enough. you know, so I don't know how I figured out that little wrinkle of making it opposite, but the method came fairly quick. But that zero block edition is pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, really, really nice. One of the Vernon books, like the Vernon Chronicle books. I yeah, I've read that used somewhere as a, a blackjack demonstra demonstration where you take a nine and a seven and turn them into the ace and the jack of spades. Yeah, it's a thing. very it's a very useful move. Yeah, if very nice. Done. Done. All so right, we, and, uh, if you want, I can show you a quick one, unless we want to talk some more. Uh, I just wanted to really quickly touch on that trick. Um, what about that trick sure. really makes it magical for you? Is it the the uh, transposition of the your cards and my card mine? Uh, idea is it the, the the neat sleight of hand or the the cool double lift uh, what is it I like well, them all for, well for, well thank you I mean well first of all and, you know when you're just when I design I've designed a lot of magic I've, uh, <clears throat> and most of the time they're just variations on things that have already been done before mm -hmm. I mean even this trick has probably been done in its own way it's very much like uh, Ron Swigert's uh, kickback in its own way mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but the thing is is that you're trying, what I learned from Bill Malone is you're trying to come up with something that is going to connect with the audience. So this trick ticks all the boxes for me because, first of all, the trick is cool. There's enough moves in it to make me happy. <laughs> At the same time, it's all of the interaction and it's all the little, you know, you know, the what's yours is mine, what's mine is yours. This could be your card, but this is mine. 
it's all that byplay, and it provides a lot of byplay. And that, to me, is the secret of, you know, it's like you could do a, like a trick, you know, that's really cool to look at, but ultimately, who cares? You know, you want something that is going to be a full piece of entertainment from the beginning to end. You know, and a really good lesson that when I was working for Bill, my friend Corey Allen said, you know, go study the, go study the, um, the Sam the Bellhop, and he goes, what makes that work? You know, and really what it comes down to is like, yeah, anybody can memorize the script and do the trick, and they even might, might be able to do the sh cuts and shuffles really well. But it's whenever he breaks character is what makes that thing work. Like whenever he stops, he goes, oh, could you cut the cards? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Bobbitt. You know, I hope that's, <laughs> you know, and he breaks, he breaks from the script. You know, even that stuff is basically part of the script, but it doesn't seem like it. It's mm -hmm. a little byplay that's going to endear you to the audience, you know, and that's what makes it a full piece of entertainment. So to answer your question, I like, I like them. It has enough moves in it, you know, not terribly difficult, but it's movie enough. You know, it, the, it's also a, the, the, um, the effect is very clear. You know, you know nobody has to really kind of guess what's what, you know. So those are the things that work for me. That's fantastic. I always love me. I, I do mostly close up and uh, the audience interaction and the, the uh, ad living as you go along. Like when I create uh, scripts for tricks or routines, they're not really, you know, like really tightly scripted. They're basic ideas and I use the crowd uh, to feed off of and figure out which direction I'm going to go. And that's part of the reason why I like that trick so much because the audience interacts. Right, and you have, and to, give the, them you have to give them opportunities for that where they can interact. Yeah, and you have to give them opportunities where they can interact. So you have to yeah. give them a you have to give them a role. And that cute little joke like when you asked you uh, what cards these are, and I said mine, and you said no, these are mine. Little jokes like that. Yeah, exactly. That seem, that seem, I, yeah, they they seem kind of corny, but they really do uh, 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 justice to the trick. It's a cool little moment, and it's quirky, and it makes people smile. And uh, well, it's, and there's nothing wrong with a couple. Listen. There's, a, there's nothing wrong with having a couple corny jokes as long as it's delivered tongue in cheek, yeah. and they're both aware that, they're aware that you're aware that it's corny if that's the case. Yeah, you know because one of the worst compliments you can you know one of the like the backhanded compliment I get from a lot of people was, man, I was really expecting this to be corny or I was really expecting this to be bad, but man, that was amazing. Yeah. You know, because they've seen so much bad magic before then, you know. But um, yeah, you can tell a couple corny jokes as long as there's a little bit of a wink behind it that you know, because you, you don't want to be accused of being corny. That's just like to me, that's a death. So before I get you to do another trick, uh, where can yeah. people go for resources of this type of magic, whether it be uh, <laughs> the sleight of hand or maybe some sort of a creative psychological type books? Uh, well, okay. Well, first of all. You know, um, you know, I don't, you know, if you get into the whole argument of, you know, books versus video, they're both effective. I mean, I've learned from videos, but the majority of the things that I've learned are from books. Now, the thing, the, the main argument, if you haven't if you've heard this before, the best thing about learning from a book is that you are going to come up with your own way of presenting it and you're not going to be imitating and mimicking somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, because you're putting yourself into it. So that's like the biggest argument, you know, for reading your books. But the more books you read, it's amazing. Like when I started to put, you know, make my own tricks, I realized I had a pretty large repertoire of slights and strategies from reading for so many long. So I had a lot to pull from, you know. So when you have a pretty big, you know, toolbox of slights and strategies, you know, then you have a lot more things that you can make. Well, I think you want to learn, yeah, my, the, my penguin lecture, is, is a, for, if you like the style of magic that I do, that's kind of quirky and fun and magical, please, you know, go, go on, you know, I mean, if you, first of all, if you want, I can give like a sales pitch. I mean, I have it, um, normally it goes for $29 a penguin, but I'll give it to you for 20, uh, your watchers for $20 okay. with a couple of set of, you know, Okay. but, uh, but getting back to your question, my favorite Slide of handbooks were, uh, I think Paul Cummins' books were wonderful from a shuffle deck and use mm. were fantastic books. Anything by Gary Kurtz, the old, um, you know, the old Jay Sankey stuff, you know, not so much what he's done recent years, but, you know, but 
way back when. Yeah, so it's amazing, fun, fun stuff. I always thought the same about books. The thing with books is you gain a very large general knowledge of everything because um, you don't necessarily go through every trick in a book, uh, but you glance through it and you understand the concepts that are being taught and you just gain a lot of knowledge that way. I find video is a lot better when you, uh, uh, when you want specific help with presentation and, and, and difficult things that require good camera angles to really understand what's going on. Right. That's, and you know, and pe people like Mike, people like Mike Close have figured out he, where he has a lot of his eBooks, but he has a lot of the moves embedded in there so you can see what they look like in real time. So using the medium, you know, that's using the medium in a very appropriate way, you know, where you basically you might have, you know, if you can kind of see what it looks like, then you can go back and read the paragraphs and the sentences and, you know, <clears throat> at least you'll know where you're going, you know, you know what the end is going to look like. You okay. Know? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, here's your opportunity to uh, pitch yourself. So you can go ahead and pitch yourself and let us know how you can be contacted. I'll make sure to put a link to your website and also uh, your information on the screen. So, okay, go ahead. Well, my, well, my regular website's being built, but if you just Google my name, Edward Oshman, you'll find lots of stuff. But um, I will offer the, the Penguin Lecture for $20 and two sets of lecture notes. Now, there is some overlap between the lecture notes and Penguin, but there's a few tricks in there that are really good that are not, that didn't make it to the Penguin Lecture. But, you know, but if they want to pay PAL $20 to e Osham, E-O-S-C-H-M, at yahoo.com. Twenty dollars. I'll give you it, while supplies last. <laughs> I'll get. I'll. I'll. I'll send. Um, you know. I'll. I'll send you. Uh, basically, like an iTunes card. You know, or a picture of it. It'll have a, a little code. You know, and they'll you just go to your pen. Just go to your regular Penguin account, and then type in that code, and it'll, you'll get it for. Um, you'll get it for twenty dollars, and a um, couple sets of notes, and. You know. At the end of every show, I like to guess to suggest a. Uh, fellow magician to be on one of our future shows. Do you have anybody in mind you'd like to suggest? Well, I have two people, okay? okay. Depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for um, kind of hardcore, you know, gambling, and but very entertaining, Antonio Cabral or Tony Cabral. Tony Cabral. I've got his, I think, already. Tony yeah, Well, I, I suggest, uh, yeah. Uh, however, if you ever want to do something with like a children's magician, Mm-hmm. Brother-in-law Richard Adler right here, he's literally one of the best. And if I say that, if you, I've benefited from his knowledge and his experiment, his experience. I mean, I mean, yes, he's won lots of awards, you know, but I know a lot of people who won, won lots of awards, I mean, they're good. He's great. You know what? And I've never seen anybody who owns a room the way this guy owns a room. So if you're wanting him to come in, let's go. Yeah, you know. I'll pay you later. Thank you. You can pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's interested, I'll send him some information. Yeah, he also set me up with a sister 20 years ago, and that's where oh, that well. There you go. I, I own that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll give them your information. And uh, how about sending us off with something cool? You got something cool for us? All right. So this is all right. So this is also what my um, penguin lecture, but I'm not doing send. I'm not doing this just because it's there. I, I decided to show you this trick because if you do any magic uh, and you want to get more shows, this is, you know, obviously using a, uh, your business card is a great way, you know, a great way of doing it. So this is the way I've been doing it for many years and uh, really cool. Actually, I'm actually having my brother-in-law, Richard, come over here for just a moment. Okay. Okay. So let's have a... Um, I need to pick a card? Yes. Yeah. The COVID. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Put that away. Social distancing. <laughs> we're gonna pretend like it's normal. We're gonna pretend like it's normal times. Okay. All right. I'll be Mr. Hand. Uh, you can come in this one. And now you're Mr. Belly. <laughs> come on in, man. All right. So, um, so Richard, uh, I'm gonna show that to the camera. You know what that is? I do. It's a it's a thought bubble. It's a thought bubble. That's what people say cloud, but it's a thought bubble. I don't have too many of those. Okay. <laughs> well, you look like this. Yeah. Nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank. You. So anyway, my friend, uh, I don't want to use the red pen. So let's use a blue pen. I got one here. No, I'm prepared. No, 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 no. I am prepared. All right. All right. So here's what I need you to do. Now, obviously, there's nothing in the bubble because in order to have a thought, there has to be somebody to think a thought. Right. So do you think you can think a thought? Actually, better yet, let's have one of your friends do it. Would you please draw right down here 
a little, uh, we'll call him like a little, um, a little magician, like a little Kreskin. Okay. Okay. You can be a stick figure. You're a pretty artistic guy. You can probably, you know. I met Kreskin. I, yeah, I did too. All right. I'll draw a little this picture. Okay. This, is, this is the guy from a uh, cartoon. Oh, okay. He's getting in the act again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you could always initial your work as well. Okay. All right. Would you like, would you like to, there we go. I don't know if you, can you see that over there? Okay. Yep, I can see the little guy. There's a little guy, okay? Matter of fact, would you like to sign it? You should sign sure. it. Sure. Initial your work. Uh, just do this. Beautiful. <sighs> Fantastic. All right. So, Mr. A, here's what I need you to do. I want you to take this. I want you just to kind of stab it in the middle-ish of the deck, okay? I'm going to kind of bevel the deck. I don't say that word when I'm working with people. Bevel? Bevel. Yes, I'm beveled. <laughs> I'll clean up later. Oh, yeah, just stab it anywhere in the middle. Ish. Into the bevel. Into the bevel. Into the bevel. Uh, you might have saw it. I got it. There you go. Okay. Now, as as handsome as I am, there, <laughs> you are actually the uh, the true performer. Oh, okay. There you go. There's the amazing Mr. A right there. Okay. Now, you might not realize this, but you were influenced to put these cards in a very particular place. And you place them between the five of clubs and the six of diamonds. That might not seem very uh, amazing, but no, if you think about it, the amazing Mr. A was thinking that before he even did it. Because if you take a look here, see in the thought bubble, it says the five of clubs what? and the six of diamonds. Can you see that? Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. That was fantastic. And what's nice about this is they're not going to get rid of this. <laughs> no, they're they're going to call you. Uh, I'm always surprised that how many people don't understand the underlying principle of this, and that's the out to lunch principle. You know, a lot of people don't. You know what? And if they don't, you're learning something really cool here. All right. Now, the way that the out to lunch principle is, uh, and I might have to, uh, I have the card here. This is something I think, I believe it's called the stockholder's wallet. This does the dirty work that the regular out to lunch principle does. But the out to lunch principle is I get a stack of business cards and I wrap a rubber band around it, okay? And that's it, I don't need a wallet, okay? But the way it works is thus. There is a half card right here on top, okay? And it has just a, there's nothing in it, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the other one Instead of making another one, right there. I'm going to get close here. Yeah. Okay. So I might have a stack of these ready to go. And obviously this would be blank, because but he just drew it there. And to hide that, we're going to take that little piece of the card with the other part of the bubble, and that's going to go right there. So as far as they're concerned, as far as their, 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 <laughs> their knowledge is, they're going to see that there won't be anything here when we first show the trick but they'll, they'll see a thought bubble. That's wonderful. Since I had it. And there's another thing is like when you're working professionally, little subtle things like this, they go, oh man, this guy is fancy. This guy's sophisticated. We <laughs> want him for our party. Okay. <laughs> little things, you know, Bill Malone goes so far as getting wearing the Rolex watch. I don't do that, but I understand it. Okay. But it's not a bad idea, but a rubber band works fine. I still use it that way. Make his magician. Now, some people do a very basic stick figure. If they do, if it's a very generic one, I have them just write, jot, jot their initials on there. So they can, they'll know that it's theirs. Good tip. You know, but sometimes you get some really nice little works of art there. So once that's there, I show them that. And then what I'll do is I'll, gra I'll grab it on the bottom. And you can just put your thumb on there so it doesn't accidentally come out. And then I'll turn it over. And then I'll just kind of swing this end away from me. So the cloud end is farthest away from me. Okay. And then what he'll do is he'll stab it into the pack. Now beveling it is a little bit easier. So it makes it a little bit easier to get it in. But sometimes the card's a little thick. They have to kind of saw it back and forth. But I always try to say in the middle, I always say middle-ish. Because if it comes up, if they put it near too far to the top or too far to the bottom, there's a discrepancy that just might not fly. Um, so what I'll do is I put it in the middle. So they put it there. And then since they have, this is a, I stole the penguin uh, <laughs> caricature. 
you know, hey, <laughs> why <laughs> me figure out why aren't I not, why am I not using this for my business card? Because I'm an idiot. All right, um, and then you're gonna do something called the uh, Bill Simon business card prophecy, which is a great move, very easy. Uh, I'll spread. I said, okay, that's great, but you're hiding the performer. And what I do is I just clip that uh, card. When I, once I get to it, I clip it with my, in my case, my right thumb. And all the cards in my right hand, I'm sorry, my left thumb, get turned over. You know, and then everything gets flipped over. Now, I got to be careful that I don't want to expose that little cloud there. So right before it gets turned over, I place these right on top. So now it should just look like I simply turn the card over. A great illusion. Um, and what that's done is that's, Cut the cards at that point. So now that card is in between the force cards. So I'll just, um, if you want to see it done badly, uh, go on my, um, go on YouTube and look at um, how I did it at the Magic Castle. I really screwed it up. Well, also, I'll put a link to that too. <laughs> yeah, don't. That, actually, <laughs> that tells you what I did is I spread the cards across the table and I prematurely exposed it. It wasn't a bad thing. It just wasn't, it wasn't the right way to do it. Um, so then I show this card here. I said, you see, and I like to do this. I turn it this way. So they see those two cards. They're kind of like, who cares? You know, but they knew in advance. And then you turn this over to show that. Now, Beautiful. that's a very basic. Now, what you could do is you could force these two cards, you know, and control them to the top and the bottom. So not, so when they stab it, they, you know, the first effect is that they found, you spread, you do the business card prophecy, oh, you found your selections. And then you show this. It adds one little extra part of, a little bit of magic. Yeah. I think in the basic way works a little bit better after trial and error, but try it both ways. So, Ed, uh, as we're concluding the interview here, um, I kind of wanted to thank you for being on the show, and especially for being my uh, my first guest. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You were very entertaining and very insightful. I think everybody's going to love it. Um, and, uh, I also want to thank everybody who's watching. Uh, thanks for coming. If you got something valuable, uh, uh, valuable out of this, please hit like, and subscribe. Uh, we've got more interviews coming. Um, it's going to be great. So come and see us next week. Thanks.